Hello, this is Anita with Walnut Farm Designs. Um, I'm on Facebook and Instagram um, and on Etsy. And my website is www.walnutfarmdesigns.com. Um, I wanted to do a short video on how to ply uh, from a single. Uh, you might have seen my video that shows you how to uh, begin to spin on a drop spindle. Um, if you haven't, I would recommend it. Um, but now we're going to learn how to ply those uh, singles. So you will have a uh, spindle like this that it's full of the yarn that you spun. This one's not very full but I'm just demonstrating. Um, you can make a use a shoe box or a box or something and cut little notches and use that to prop your spindle um, and then you'll want to wind the yarn into a double pull ball and you can just use a toilet paper tube make a little bit of a rip in it so that'll secure your yarn that'll secure one end I should have made my notch longer and then you just start to wind your yarn on until you have all that yarn wound around and then you'll have one one strand of your singles yarn that will be on the outside one strand of your singles yarn that will be on the inside just pull the uh, toilet paper tube out then and you will have a double pull ball like this. This one's rather small and the um, the yarn is very thin on it. Uh, but there is the yarn coming out of the center and the yarn coming out of the side. So you need two, two ends of your singles yarn to ply together. So you'll take your drop spindle like this and you will put the leader string up and three times around your hook just as you do when you're uh, spinning and then you'll want to put counterclockwise spin into the leader string that's the most important thing to remember you put clockwise to the right spin into your drop spindle when you are um, spinning your yarn counterclockwise you spin to the left when you are wanting to ply so I need to put my two ends of the yarn into my uh, leader string. So I'm holding them together and this is pretty much the same as when you're spinning your singles yarn. We're doing pretty much the same thing. So hold it and you want to put lots of counterclockwise spin into that leader string. I like to do it until it kind of telephone cords up. You can see it getting shorter and kinking up. And park the shaft between your knees like that and you'll just want to hold that spin back. Remember to keep that spin below your fingers just like when you're learning to spin on a drop spindle and then slide those fingers up and the twist is going up into it and you can see that twisting so nicely. I think the twist is always so pretty in yarn and using up that uh, spin. Now you can see my yarn is slack and it doesn't ha it's not telephone cording up so you know you've used all the spin that was in your leader spring. Then wind it on to the shaft of your spindle. Wind it three times again around the hook. Oops, see I'm gonna do it in the clockwise direction. You want to do it in the counterclockwise direction. Again lots of spin till it te telephone cords up. Just put it between your knees, again holding that spin back so it's down there and then holding your two singles yarns together. You just slide it up and I can see the two singles yarns twisting around each other and it's so pretty and now you can see that it basically doesn't telephone cord up anymore and I've used my spin up. Unwind it from the hook and wind it back on your shaft of your yarn, leave a little space and do it again. Um, remember counterclockwise direction you soon don't think about it but at first you got to remember lots of spin so you just keep doing that until you've used all 
the yarn up. And the great thing about a center pull ball is it uses entirely all your singles because it's you're plying it on itself. You will use all your yarn. You won't end up with one ball that has more yarn on it and um, than the other. So you use it very efficiently. So it's a great way to ply. Um, then you can again, once you've done that and you've plied all your yarn, you can again sit it in your box and uh, wind it again into a center pull ball on the, uh, on the toilet paper tube again. So, and then you have a beautifully plied yarn. Now, a lot of people don't like um, their first uh, yarns they spin. They say, oh, I'm not very good. Well, let me show you um, what you can make with uh, the first yarns that you spin. This, the bottom of this bag was all made with yarn that I spun on a drop spindle just like this um, and plied. And then this is the same type of wool that comes in a lot of my kits. Um, this type of wool. This is the exact same wool, just a different color. Um, and it was also spun on plied on a drop spindle. I believe that's top yarns were my first spinning on a, uh, on a spinning wheel. So if you think, oh, it's lumpy and bumpy, it actually, once it's worked up plied, you'll see how beautiful it is plied and then worked up, it is really beautiful. And so you shouldn't be hard on yourself um, and think, oh, this isn't perfect. Well, who wants perfect? We want handmade and really just a beautiful product. And before long, you'll be able to spin thin and fine and even, and you'll find that it is very difficult to go back and spin those first beautiful thick and thin yarns. I have some of the first yarns that I spun and I think they're so beautiful and now I couldn't go back and recreate that thick and thin look um, that I did when I first began to spin. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions please contact me at Walnut Farm Designs whether on Instagram, Facebook, um, or Etsy.